Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. You join me on an absolutely beautiful day at Mercia Marina where we attempt to tackle one of the projects that we're hoping to get done over the winter period which is to replace the hot water tank otherwise known as the calorifier. So we're doing this in a bid to get the boat ready for central heating which will be fitted by Ed Shires over the coming months and also to increase the boat's value. So join us as we attempt to fit the water tank, not flood the boat and make sure you do wait till the end because as you will see it doesn't exactly go to plan. So I hope you enjoy this vlog, if you're new please consider subscribing, like the video and leave a comment, it really does help the channel. Let's get into the vlog! Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we are replacing our calorifier tank and also adding in an expansion tank and an accumulator tank. This is because at the moment we don't have an immersion heater on the boat, so we can only heat the hot water using the engine, and um, which isn't ideal when you're in the marina because you don't want to run your engine every day. So we're going to replace the, the tank and then add in an additional two tanks with a view of being able to get our central heating fixed in the next few months. So to fix that, we need to upgrade our system. So we have a twin coil calorifier. So all this will become clear as, as we go through the vlog. Um, and then we can get a Wobasto fitted. So that's what we're working on today. So we'll take you along and show you how we're gonna do it. So before we get started, we're gonna sit down and have a coffee to get a bit of confidence and just think about how we're gonna do it. Obviously it's a bit stressful disconnecting the whole water system and replacing it because we could have leaks and the last time I tried to do anything water related on my previous boat, I did end up spraying water everywhere. So hopefully this time it will go smoothly. My partner and I are doing it together because it's it's really complicated and I couldn't do it by myself. So we're going to do it together and hopefully it won't go too badly. So we'll have our coffee and we'll see you when we're ready to start. So this is our existing calorifier. So it's a single coil calorifier. So like I said earlier, we're changing it so that it has a twin coil, but more importantly, so that it has um, immersion switch so we can get hot water when we're plugged in on hookup. So the size of tank that we're going for, we think is about the same, which is about 55 liters. And yeah, basically we need to change some of the hoses around because it's a totally different setup to this one. But what we've done is we've marked up the hoses with tape and that relates to a diagram that we've got so we know which pipes are for what. So this is the diagram that we're working to so it explains in each section what each bit's for. So like I said with the tape we've marked up each bit of the tape so that's the hot water pipe there so that's marked up and that one's marked up. Um, yeah, so this is how we've done it. Not saying it's it's the best way to do it, but this is what we're working to as a reference. So what we've decided to do is pick the lowest pipe connected to the front of the tank. We're going to lift it up so it's above the top of the tank, cut it, and then in theory we should have very little water coming out until that pipe is passed below the top of the tank, then it should let water out. It could be under pressure, so we've got buckets ready and plenty of towels. And just to mention, obviously, before we start, we have turned off the water pump. So there's no water that can get through from the tank to the calorifier tank. So we expect a bit of mess, but hopefully not too much. So when we do get um, water in the buckets, we plan to just throw it out using the duck catch. So that way we can just do it quickly because the duck catch is here and the calorifier tank is just here. So it should be easy and straightforward to do it that way. So one of the things that we've invested in after we had so many problems the last time I attempted to do anything with water was a proper pipe cutter. So I'm going to cut the pipe now and hopefully it'll work. Wish us luck. Okay. Because I'm going to make the first cut. Maybe not. 
No, I can't do it. It holds further back. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm too scared. That wasn't too bad. I got a bit on your sock. <laughs> I'd rather it went on your sock rather than the carpet. So Why is it black? That should be um, fluid from the old radiator system. Oh. So what pipe did we cut? The the lowest one on the tank. Which is? That one. Yeah, I can see. But what was it for? Um, was it the water coming in? or? Well, this, in theory, should drain anything out of the first coil. So oh. if there's anything in the coil, it's going to go below. And that's that one done. Okay. This is the pipe from the pump to the chlorifier providing the cold water input. So in theory, this has got no pressure coming from the pump, but it's got 55 litres of water sat waiting to come out of here. So we need to lift this end, like before we did with the other pipe, above the bottom of the tank, sorry, above the top of the tank, so as we don't get water everywhere. This is going to leak a bit because there's water, residual water in the pipe that we haven't been able to drain out yet. So we're going to get wet. Right, I'm going to just get the duck hatch open, ready. Yeah, I'm really nervous about this one. Oh God. Well done. You want me to help you? Anything? Good. Pumps that, that's empty. So now we do this one. Okay, not coming out very rapidly, but it's coming out. Why is it not coming out quickly? I thought it would gush everywhere. Yeah, it, I think it's because there's no air can get into the tank. So we can put this one. Out of the way. Could it start gushing once we start moving the tank? Yeah. It could? Yeah. So as we go along, we are taping the ends to match the other side of the tape so we know which pipe is which. Otherwise we're just getting a confused mess. So this one, I'm going to... Hang on. Oh god. No, no real pressure in it. I'm really scared. Okay. See the air's gone in, and yeah. the water's coming out. Well, that wasn't too bad. Have you filmed that? They filmed the cameras on, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it would be gushing everywhere. It's not under pressure. Yeah. Only how many more litres to go? 35. 35. <laughs> Obviously there's no antifreeze that's been tipped into the canal. This is purely just water that's out of the tank just cold water, so we're not tipping any antifreeze into the canal. So we've drained the water tank as best that we can. Um, we're gonna get ready now to lift the tank out of the boat to get room for the new one coming in. So we've managed to get the old calorifier out. As you can see, there was a little bit of a spillage, but given that there was 55 litres in the tank, I don't think it's too bad. So we're going to get the new one unboxed and then put it in place and see how we're going to connect it up. So we've got the 55 litre chlorifier to go here and then we also have an 8 litre expansion tank to fit in somewhere in this area. So that went a lot better than we expected it to. Um, it was quite nerve wracking disconnecting 
the calorifier, you're in a confined space and there's a lot of water and you don't obviously want to spill it everywhere. So we had a little bit of a spillage but nothing too bad so we're happy with how it went. So this is our new calorifier, it's quite a bit longer than the other one but we did measure up so we know it, it will fit. It's the same amount of litres we think, we don't know because we don't have the original paperwork for the last one. But this one's 55 litres and this is the new set up on the top. So I'm not sure exactly what's what, so do you want I'll to talk through, about it? I'll yeah. go through that. This is the inlet for the hot water coming from the engine through the coil one and it'll go out of that outlet. The inlet for the hot water that's going to come from the overspatcher for the for the hot Wabasto. water and sorry the Wabasto. Do you want to do that again? No, no, keep going. <laughs> for the Wabasto and that'll be the outlet from the Wabasto. Then we've got our cold water inlet from the mains from the pump and then our hot water outlet yeah and this is the bit that we can adjust here so that you can put i can't remember its, it's proper name uh, what's this bit called we'll refer to the paperwork thermostatic mixing that's valve. it so this stops the water from getting too hot so in our previous boat when we fitted this the water was so hot so you have to adjust this and then it stops you from burning yourself and finally we've got an outlet that if the pressure gets too great this can then go out to the bilge yep and then is that for anything that's the pressure release valve oh, okay so yeah that's it it's quite tall it comes up to about about my hip just under so it's a, a bit longer than the other one so we'll see how well it fits in. Oh, really so the calorifier is 37 inches long so yeah We've got the new tank, we're just going to lift it into place. That fits okay. We've still got a little bit of water coming out just behind the tank. Plastic container there. So we think we're going to put it this way so that we can get access to all the fittings from this side rather than trying to get over that side. So that's our thought process. And we also have this 8 litre expansion bottle to put in somewhere. So we're just going to do a bit of Tetris and see where that's going to go. So where we cut the cold water pipe we've just put a new connector in so we put a little piece of metal in each side to stop it from squeezing and then put a new connector on so when we do the next one we'll show you how we did it so this is the little piece of metal that i was talking about that goes into each side of the pipe where we cut it and then we put the little connector on so i'll show you the little connector that we used so this is the connector it's an inline speed push fit so you slacken these bits off push it in and then tighten it up again. You do the same on both sides. We have a new small piece of pipe to connect the main inward pump pressured cold water into the tank. The pieces of metal that are going to go in the end are push fit and it stops the pipe from squashing when you connect the connectors. Okay. We'll go on to this connect piece it. is now going to go and connect that T junction onto the chlorifier tank. Oh. Hey, that the first one on? Yeah. Well, that's exciting. That's a cold fit. Are you happy? Yes. So as per the instructions, we're using HEP 20 or a speed fit. So we have checked with Midland Chandlers that these connections that we're using are correct. And that's what they've recommended us to use. Next, we need to connect the hot water domestic supply from the hot water outlet onto the hot water pipe. So we've got to go upwards to get to the right height to come across to the top of the tank. Yep, so we've done the same where we put the little metal bits into the new piece of pipe like that to protect it. So we're going to push it in and then put an adapter on it to go across to the top of the calorifier tank. Just 
just noticed we've got another little spill down there. Just there. Yes. So I will go and get a cloth for that. The dogs are unfazed by this project. Hugo's having a nap on the couch. And Coco is also having a nap in front of the fire. Hey, eh? You're making the most of it being in front of the fire. Is that nice, is it? What do you think, Hugo? You're not bothered either, are you? Good boy. There. Putting the top pipe on from the 90 degree. Push fit. Under the tank. Good cutting by me, that doesn't fit, <laughs> so I need to redo that. Slightly too long, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, it's a good job we're using these push bits because it just comes off again. What's the saying? Measure twice, cut once. What's your thoughts to that? Not saying a word. <laughs> so I forgot to mention, we obviously, you can see here, we turned the calorifier around. So originally I said that we were going to have all the connectors at this side. But because of the way the existing tank was set up, it was all set up to go to this side. So we've decided to go this way. It's not a big deal really, is it? Keep uh, the piping down to a minimum. Yeah, so we don't want any leaks or anything. So that's why we've decided to do it this way. Round two, let's see if this one will fit. So we loosen it off, push it in and then tighten it up. And then push it on to the chlorophyll tank. And then we'll just tighten it up again. Are you happy? Happy as I can be. <laughs> Still a bit stressed? Yeah. We'll get there. Okay. Our next connection is going to be to connect the output, the pressure output for the bilge. And that will go from this output here. We're going to go straight across into a right angle into the bilge output pipe. Okay. So you're putting the piece of pipe that you just cut onto there. Yeah, tighten it up. And then this and one. Connecting it for the bilge output. Yeah. So does that mean that if there's too much pressure in the tank, it will release it into the bilge? Yeah, the red button there, you can actually manually turn that outwards, which is on a spring. Yeah. Which then lets the pressure out. We're now going to do the engine hot water into the first coil so that's the engine hot water in pipe have you done it again no <laughs> there we go and is that it for just now yeah. We've put, again, a metal piece in the pipe to stop it from squashing. We're now going to put a 90 degree onto this pipe and then connect this pipe onto the collector fire. Fingers crossed. good now we're going to go for the radiator inlet hot water straight onto the calorifier one more to do and then that's it our final connection is the final radiator to make the circuit on the second coil, which is going from this 90 degree into this top inlet. In theory, we are finished. Yeah? Okay, I'm practicing with this little bit of pipe because I couldn't cut it before. So you clamp, hold the clamp down, hold it at the end, and then twist and cut. Done. We're now going to put the accumulator tank, so we want to position it hopefully in the right place. We're going to cut the hot water outlet 
the domestic supply there and then connect a T piece in which is 22 mil onto this side and 15 onto that side. Okay, and that's definitely the hot water pipe, not the cold. We don't know yet. We'll find out when we don't get any hot water. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Okay. So on checking, <laughs> we'll put the cold water pipe out of the way, which yeah. goes into the bottom of the tank, and we'll cut this one instead, which is yeah. the second hot water pipe that I was talking about that <laughs> so was hidden. Good job. One of us is paying attention. So we fastened the accumulator tank ready to go into position. So that's the tank and that's going to go onto there. Here you go, here you go, Ethan. What are you doing? 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 Gotta get you. Gotta get you. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. You woken up from your all day nap, have you? Have you? Have you got loads of energy now? <laughs> good boy, aren't you? You are a good boy. Oh, sorry about the delay. So that's the expansion tank in situ. I couldn't film putting it in because it ended up becoming a two man job. So, yeah, I had to help. So that's, that's it in situ. So it's connected to the hot water pipe and yeah i don't actually know what the expansion tank does takes, i assume it takes the pressure off yeah so it takes the pressure off so you need one of them for the central heating so i didn't say at the beginning but we're getting this ready so that ed shires who i've done work with before can come in and fit the central heating for us at some point in, over the next few months so that's this part done so we're going to get ready to put the um cold water pump back on and test all of these connections and see if there's any leaks so we'll do that next. So I'm just going to turn the cold pump back on. Hopefully there'll be no leaks, but we'll see how it goes. Are you going to shout if there's any leaks? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going on now. Yeah. Are we okay? So far. So you'll be able to hear the water is filling up in the tank. So we'll just go and have a closer look at the connections. So at the moment, we have no leaks, which is awesome. So we'll let that fill up and then we'll test it on the pump itself, eh, on the taps, rather. So the water tank has just finished running. It took a, about five minutes, would you say, yeah, to good. fill this one and that one. So it's now full. Most of the connections were okay, apart from the bilge one, which leaked just slightly. So you manage to push it back on, tighten it up, and the leaking has stopped. So we're obviously going to leave this open. We're not going to put the cushions or anything back on until all of this is dried out and we can monitor it over the next day or two, yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just to check that everything's okay. So the next thing we've got to do is fit another one of these for the cold water um, just after the pump, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that one will act as the accumulator, which should stop the pump from pulsing. Um, so we've got that to do. And then we've also got the, I don't know if you can see it in there, the wiring to do for the immersion switch. So we're hoping to finish those off today, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So we didn't really get any further forward today and we ran out of time and this vlog is way too long. So I'm going to split it in two. But basically this is what happened when we turned on the engine after filling it with coolant. Um, it started to overheat so obviously we have a problem somewhere so we're going to take a bit of time to try and resolve this and hopefully in the next vlog you will see the system up and running. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye! So this one I'm going to... Hang on. Oh god. To hold further back. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs>